Welcome back to Learn BC. My name's Jared, and we're here to talk about why Business Central is the series. This video is what do you get out of the box? So before we start, I'd like to ask you, please click like, please subscribe, please take a moment to share some love, share these videos with some friends. We appreciate you doing that. It helps us build the channel. Let's get into it. Here I am in Business Central, quite vanilla from our last video. We set up a brand new Microsoft environment. Um, the first thing that can be a little bit, little bit weird is if you office, log into Office and you provision this trial, um, you can't find it easily, all right? And that's because Microsoft creates the apps via cache, via what you're using the most of over time, unless your administrator goes and creates some icons here it may be a bit difficult. So the best thing for you to do is actually to go up to the search bar. Now, if you're getting pop-ups in the home screen, close them first, and then you type Business Central, B-U-S. It's gonna pop open and ask you, do you wanna join the production environment or do you wanna go to a sandbox? Production is where you'd normally work. That's where your trial is. Um, if we've not created any sandboxes yet, they won't exist. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And here we are. We're in the new production environment. All right, close a few of these browsers off and let me run a few things with you. So Business Central out of the box is already um, cloud, 100% cloud in your Office 365. If your security score out of the box is already high, um, and if you don't know what your Microsoft scorecard is for security, you should you should know if you're if you're concerned for your IT, you want to know that you're over eighty percent. Um, and IT part is the amount of companies that I go into and I ask, and it's down around twenty percent, is disgusting. Your security of the environment at Microsoft covers everything. It covers all of your Microsoft product. So Business Central is an easy ad. If you take security seriously, it deploys within the environment. And this Business Central is already available in your environment. You'll already have uh, a, an administrative function. If you were to take this address and put your own Microsoft tenant here, it would show up in blank with no companies. Business Central architecture is deployed to every client. So there's no heavy installation. There's no big risk of change management. There's no infrastructure. There's no network layer. There's no topology changes. It's just available out of the box, okay? All you needed to do is ask for it and two minutes to provisioning time and it's up and running. We are here and we're in a default company called Kronos. Now, Kronos very quickly is Microsoft's uh, pseudo manufacturing assembly, supply chain, uh, project company that does some furniture and coffee machines. So if you go into your items, you'll see some um, a bunch of products here and uh, it comes with trade history with a list of customers that we've got here. And we've got a list of vendors as well. And uh, they're vendors out of the box. Now you'll notice as I'm clicking around, you're gonna get these features pop up. As I do certain things, if I go back, see this about vendors. Okay, so these pop-ups are coming because when we provision a new user in Business Central and we go into my settings, it says, please show teaching tips. So that's just going to keep popping up wherever we go. As you go through Business Central, you're going to get these tips that are going to help you um, get a, a better experience for Business Central. The second thing you want to do is, now I'm in my settings, is just check the version uh, like of your region, your language, your time zone. And then you've got the ability to change your role. And there's a bunch of roles that are available here for Business Central out of the box that you can play with. We're going to stay in the Business Central evaluation just for now. And I'm going to leave the language the same. But just remember, um, anything to do with language, for example, because I'm in Australia, as soon as I turn around and change my language, I might change this back to Australia, just here. And the reason for that is as I go through this demo, um, depending on the country and the region that you're in here, it will change the language. And so you end up with this, uh, tax means different things in different regions. Just on that one setting, quite simple, which is really cool. Let's keep going. We've now loaded back in and it's saying, 
let's get started. Hey, here's a few things. And you've got this, uh, basically this tool mode that Microsoft brings in. I can close that and it will shrink it, but it will never go away. The only way to go away is actually to go through it one thing at a time and tick them all off. Okay. And once they're all completed, the bar will disappear and you're good to go. And you should have a screen that looks roughly like this without this green bar here. All right. So, Business Central, before I get into the modules, let's talk about what it is. It's 100% cloud, okay? It is the same platform already here for desktop, mobile, and tablet. So, I'm going to go to the bar here, the URL bar before the question mark, and I'm going to type tablet. And in Chrome or... Uh, yeah, any of your browsers, you should be able to go down into developer tools and just flick over this into a tablet mode. I'm going to go into an iPad Pro and turn it sideways. All right, so this is Kronos for a tablet. Out of the box, I can start playing with and using just like it. And the speed that it's operating here at is what it works like in the field, that's how quick it is. And that's what's really good about this platform is that I can use it portable straight away with minimal minimal effort. I'm gonna change this to a phone. Let's go to an X, uh, let's uh, iPhone, what's that, a 14? And I'm gonna change the address here to phone. And now you're actually loading the phone version of Vista Central. So getting started and I can, click on my sales this month, I can see an invoice, I can pull it up, I can go back and go into my customers. Now, the menus that you're seeing here change, the reports and dashboards all change based around my role. I'm currently in the business manager. If I'm a manufacturing manager, production manager, um, it changes, it changes for everybody. So let's just scrap that, go back to production and start again, okay? so. First point is this, it's security is as secure as you are now, okay? If you take security really, really seriously, you'll get better security with your accounting system than what you've got at the moment. The second thing is it's already 100% cloud. It's native cloud. There's nothing on site. There's no on-premise servers, software, anything. It's just there and it's accessible. All right, so the platform's cloud. It's ready to go. We're up and running in five minutes. I can start stepping through some tools. There's help just here in the question mark. You can go to Microsoft Learn, which is a rich resource for Business Central training. There is tons of information here that you can jump yourself into on the product, okay? So right out of the box, we're already running. I've got a dummy database. And if I go up here to the production environment, I can see I have a couple of, companies. I've got my company in Kronos. Um, excuse me. Yeah. And so we're, it's, this is a fully capable environment for production, but running in trial. So right now we've got finance module. We've got chart of accounts. Okay. I've got the ability to run consolidations. I've got the ability against any general ledger code to turn around run consolidation, run multi-currency, reporting currencies back to alternate currencies. We've got the ability to run something which is called dimensions. Um, so dimension codes give us the ability to tie and break down your general ledger transactions down by um, using tags is the best way to describe it. So if I go down to an income account here, I've got some example income. And as you look at any of these transactions, you can see that there's a $38,000 transaction here. But if I look at the entry and click dimensions, it's going to tell me a story. And so we can now deploy a system that captures a story about your clients and your trade through your business immediately. Dimensions is a very, very cool thing if you can pull it off. Okay. Finding a way that you don't have to fiddle with dimensions every day. That's the artwork. Okay. So let's step out of this customer, uh, customer's uh, chart of accounts. Sorry, the step out of the chart of accounts. All I've done is I'm, I'm using a shortcut key, which is the escape key. I'm just going escape, escape, escape. Finance gives us a full ARAP. We've got the ability to do OCR using ReadSoft. So there's an inbuilt OCR service. It's not as good as some extension in the marketplace like Xflow by SignUp Software as an example, 
but it it does have legs, and Microsoft's making room in Copilot for uh, AI scanning of documents inbound, which is very, very cool. We've got finance has the ability to do budget, geo budgets. We've got the ability, as we said, currencies. We can do our GST statements, so we can do our effectively our end of month in this platform. You got the ability to do statistical accounts and a bunch of other things as well, which is really cool. We have the ability to do our bank accounts. There's two types of bank reconciliations in the system. There's a payment recon. So you see payment uh, reconciliation journal and then bank account reconciliations. So payment records take your statement every day and you reconcile the payment, but it relates back and prepares your bank statement for later. Whereas a bank statement recon, you can do that every day. Then, you know, you just get to choose how you work. Small businesses, we do one. Big businesses, they'll have an AR team that does their payment recons and their their the accounting team will do the bank account reconciliations later. Um, we've got, uh, from a sales perspective out of the box, we've got the ability to take all the way through from opportunity, which is not on here. So opportunity, creating opportunity is a CRM. You can turn around and go from sales quote order through to invoice. Um, and then there's more to it than this. This is not showing you the warehousing module, which would do shipments, picks, You've got the ability to do receipts and put always movements, et cetera. You've got purchasing. We have the ability to purchase quote all the way through purchase order, purchase invoice. You've got the ability to do returns in sales. So sales return orders as an RA. You've got the ability to track purchase return orders just here. And that's because it touches the inventory. So you need to allow for the stock coming back in as an asset. You've got credits, credits, credits all over the place. We have this cool tool just here, which is Shopify, and we're able to spin up a Shopify shop fully connected to Business Central in about five minutes, okay? Now, it depends on, you know, there's, there's you know, a disclaimer there. You could have 10,000 products, it won't take you hours, but out of the box with a dozen products that are in this system, we can sync to a new Shopify store, have up and running in about five minutes, okay? We'll cover that in another recording. And then we're going to get into more functions that are in the system. There's a new feature here called All Reports, which basically summarizes your reporting by module so you can actually look at where all the reports are and find it, which is pretty cool. So all Reports. And then this hamburger thing is where you can find every feature within the system based on my role. So I'm currently in a business manager. If I want to see all roles, I hit this up. And now it goes into a lot more detail. So I can see sales and marketing, manufacturing, service, human resources. You've got purchasing, warehousing projects, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot here within the system. Now, the, the company out of the box will provision to you, if you go into company information, this is where uh, you have a lot of merge data. We'll teach you this more in the tutorials as you go through, but if you're wanting to change the brand in your demo, you can log in here, just go into the cog here, click in company information, change your logo and your company details, and straight away, this is Learn PC Demo Co. And just like that, the company's been renamed, and I could change the logo, and then all the logo on the default statements and invoices and everything is changed straight away. So it's all changed here. Your default shipping details, payments, and right down the bottom is user experience. I've changed this to premium, but it comes out of the box as essentials. If you are on essentials, you will not have the freedom to touch premium uh, features. So that is manufacturing or service. If we go back into our hamburger, that's these more roles. That's these roles on the right. They will disappear and you won't be able to use them. All right. So we have out of the box, uh, let's start off at uh, talking about inventory and items. We have a bunch of items that are here, but we also have a requirement in most businesses to have locations and to break down your inventory by locations. So when we look at the locations, it comes out of the box with half a dozen locations, including some transit locations. So what does this mean? This means as I'm moving from Maine to Silver locations, it has to go through our own logistics. And so as we ship from Maine, it actually transfers the stock onto our own logistics, then moves on to silver. Every location comes with its own configuration. So here I can see warehousing and I can go from basic to advanced 
to crazy advanced with directed uh put aways and picks you've got all sorts of stuff that's that's here waiting to scream at your business to i'm here to help i'm here to simplify things which are really really cool um going further through the system with inventory you've got the ability off an item if i look at in a air pot um let's just go this one here we have the ability to use uh advanced features which on an item would be your bills and materials okay so bill of materials out of the box you've got uh, production out of the box you've got assemblies out of the box you've got the ability to manufacture through routes using manufacturing uh centers work centers uh so work centers relate to labor manufacturing machine centers relates to machine um you've got uh uh, other things here that would benefit you um, from the planning and replenishment, the ability to turn around and plan and control those levels by using what we call stock keeping units. So now I've got those half a dozen locations. I can actually configure how my stock behaves across half a dozen locations out of the box. Very cool. Um, now we've got our items. We've got an advanced sales and purchasing function with items with customers and vendors. Your customer management gives us quite a lot of capability out of the box to actually step in and talk not only the customer data, which on its level here gives me an address and some invoicing preferences. It gives me payment preferences and shipping, which is cool. Okay. Also some nice little statistics here about that client. But we've got the ability to do against the customer what we refer to as multiple ship to addresses. We've got multiple contacts for the customer. You've got the ability to do personalized document layouts. We've got new features with Microsoft, which is direct debit mandates. So you can control debiting customer bank accounts um, and bank account details for paying, reimbursing customers and so on. All right create new documents we've got workflow approvals out of the box that goes across all the modules um well most of the modules uh vendors is very very similar as i go into a vendor it's going to look very similar to a customer just the inverse um but again advanced features that most systems don't think of so when you get stuck in an erp the things you'll be asking yourself is why didn't they think of that business central it still has a little bit of that but 99% of it is answered with Business Central, okay? And the rest you can work around because it's unique to your business by doing a development minor customization. So we've covered customers, vendors, items. We've talked about finance. We've got a full chart of accounts. We've got the ability to handle uh, reporting and complex reporting. There is actually a financial reports that allows us to do uh, complex reporting broken down however we would like to break it down so we can control creation of advanced reporting by creating our own rows and columns um, it allows us if we just simplify this up to go in and control and define the rows and the column definition if i look at a row um, and i look at the row it's programmed by us so what your chart of accounts is doesn't mean it needs to be on the report okay so i could do a report by row that's summarized from 300 gl codes into 10 and then i can break it down by column into a dimension of what might might be by state so you want to see revenue by state it might be by department by whatever and you can do that quite quickly and create all of those finance reports you've got in the actual total reports when you talk about in the system you've got the ability let's go into report layout selection there is thousands of reports in here out of the box there are three key types of reports that you want to think about within this system the fourth was really that custom finance reports that i just showed you there the second one for us, uh, so it's the, you know, the one we just showed you, which is finance reports you can build. You've got RDLC, which is like Crystal Reports. Uh, it uses Microsoft Report Builder. Um, you've got, uh, if I go to 1304, you've got a Word report, okay? You've also got Excel reports. So there are types of reports that you can run. So there's Word report. We've got the ability to actually go and customize that we can export that so i can say hey yep 
I'm going to take a copy of that and I'm going to just go here and export it. And as I export that report, I'm going to get a Word document that we can actually go and fiddle with again out of the box. I didn't need any software installed other than Microsoft Suite. This is a template. It's, okay. And I've got the developer tools already enabled. All right. And I go into my options down here to do that. I get developer tools, XML mapping, and I have the schema of everything I could merge onto this document by just clicking the space, insert as plain text, just like that. And so the ability to do things in Vista Central out of the box is quite easy. It's quite flexible. There's just a lot. Okay. There's a lot because it allows for a lot. So we've covered the fact that customers, vendors, items, you can see now how you've got the full sales purchasing. You've got the ability to engage externally and it's got our full finance back of office functions. Let's go into some advanced modules. The first one that we've got, we have assemblies. Now I might not have assembly order here, but if I go and create one, I've got the ability to do assembly orders out of the box. Okay. I've got the ability to do production. And so I can go production, let's go uh, release production orders. There isn't one here and I can create one. So the full ability to actually step straight into production orders. Again, this needs deploying. It needs configuring to your workflow, but it's there. It's available. And the last one for us, which will have some data is projects. And projects straight out of the box gives us a couple of examples. I can jump in here and I've got an example of a project. There you go. So already for a business, there's a few things that are really cool. Um, some things that people haven't seen. If I go back into the airport, um, we are already seeing Copilot. So if I go in and search Copilot, okay, it's already active in this demo. Okay, and these are the modules that they've already uh, uh, deployed. So analysis list, e-document matching, bank account reconciliation, sales line suggestions, generally available to marketing text. So this is an example of marketing text here. You can see here, uh, this doesn't have attributes. So I might go up to another item right up the top that has an attribute, like an Athens desk. Here's an Athens desk. It's got some attributes. I can say, hey, Copilot, give me some text on this. And it's just going to go to town. It's going to go, great. Here's an example of what we think you should do. Okay. Leash the productive, you know, your productivity. And I'll say, well, that's, that's what I want, but I need it to feel a little bit more elegant. And can you just make it a bit more casual? All right. Regenerate. And so it will just go and change that tone. If you're happy with it, you just keep it. That actually publishes online with the product. So if you go through each of your items, it'll help you by generating. And all it needed was a combination of a name, a code, the picture, and the attributes. And it goes to town. It will create that for you, which is quite cool. The other features you saw before are new features within bank accounts. For example, bank account reconciliations. And you're now seeing Copilot here. Okay, which is really cool. And you can say, hey, go reconcile my bank account for me. And it will go do that for you, which is which is really neat. Um, you have a few other features out of the box, which are really cool. I'm going to just here turn this into a list. And I'm going to say, open in Excel, edit in Excel functions. I'm going to hit it and I'll give you an example of it. All right, here we go. We've got our Excel sheet open and... Here we can see we're looking at a list and I can see a few fields in here. Um, I can personalize this out of the box to say, well, I want a few different fields. So I'm going to include their name to field. Okay. I just want a text field I can use as an example here. Um, I've gone and uh, connected Excel and I'm going to go edit in Excel. And it's going to pop open as a card. Here we go. Excel opens and connects. Wait for it. And it downloads out of the box. I can say, this is a cool feature, Mr. Microsoft. 
well done. All right, so pretty silly, but like publish, published, done. Back in Business Central, it's live. So out of the box, it's already in the Microsoft ecosystem. There's a lot to do. Now, there are features that you can do that are low touch. To get into Teams and to Outlook, it does need application installation, um, which can take a couple of hours. It takes two minutes to go install it, but Microsoft's ecosystem takes a couple of hours to provision it into your office ecosystem. So we kind of like, I'm going to leave that out of this video, and we've already got videos about that in our YouTube channel. So... You know, the ability to actually get this up and running, the ability to jump into finance, the ability to go and play with some advanced features. The last one for us that's available out of the box, which is really cool, is stepping into Power Automate. So on every one of our list views, you're going to have a Power Automate and you can then go and step in and create a automated flow. So if I click on that, it's going to jump up with a wizard and it's going to say, hey, well, what type of thing do you want to do? Okay, so it's going to give me dozens of examples. And then all you've got to do is connect the dots. So notify on Teams when a certain sales order is released in Business Central. That's pretty cool. Notify on Teams when a purchase order is released. Notify when sales shipment is posted. So really simple things. See more? Here's more. Okay. So much has really gone to town here to make it, uh, you know, to extend this platform, to make it uh, feature rich, to make it useful. Um, you know, we love it. I think it's a phenomenal environment. It's got great data. Um, yeah, but out of the box, it's pretty rich. Now, that does not mean we do not use Business Central extensions, and we've got extensions out there already for extending OCR, for extending warehousing, for extending production, uh, for automating shipments. We've got extensions for simplifying features with Business Central for automating stuff to do with your ABN taxation. So there is reason to use extensions, but out of the box, this platform is already pretty good in comparison with your industry tier across small business. Yeah, you can't go wrong with this.